Hey everybody, welcome to It's Real with Jordan and Demi. I'm Jordan Edwards. And I'm Demi Ramos. And today we've got Lute on the show. They're a musical duo from right here in New York City. And Emma, one half of the duo, went to high school with Demi. Is that correct? She absolutely did. We were in a songwriting class together. Shout out LaGuardia High School and the Music Ensemble and Mr. Apostle. Um, yes, um, Emma has always been this super beautiful, talented um, singer songwriter. She was, I remember we were in high school playing guitar and piano um, since we were teenagers. So I'm super excited to see where she's at right now and to talk more about her new releases. I feel like Loot, their music kind of reminds me of like late 2000s, early 10s dance pop, but like caffeinated, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Everything is super driven and makes me want to go out with girls and do something crazy. You know what I mean? Or break up with somebody, which, you know, they can do it all. Or, they do it or. all. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan's like. <laughs> they actually have yet to put out an entire album. They've just released EPs, you know, a few EPs. So I'm curious, you know, I'm a big album advocate, you know, albums to me represent Are. a body of work, something substantial. So I'm curious about their plans for that. And they've done so many collaborations. One of the most recent one was with David Guetta. Um, so they're just killing it all around. And they're also songwriters. They're, they've written for so many people um, and that you know and love today. So I'm, I'm excited to talk to them about their process as songwriters as well. You know what I mean? Which yeah. is super rare. I think one thing is crazy about them. Not crazy. I exaggerate. One thing that's interesting is that <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, they're a male-female duo but they're not dating this is something that i bet you every single oh, yeah. person oh, yeah. wants to know what is the I, juice well i don't care about that because they're not <laughs> dating and they've had said in a million interviews that mm -hmm. you know they're not dating that it's don't worry about it so i'm not going to press them on that this isn't e but this isn't there... entertainment news absolutely what i'm curious about is you know like how you maintain a platonic mm. partnership you know you spend so much time together Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting. Oh, here's oh Jackson. my God. It's oh. half of loot. Hey, what's up? You've got some sick soundproofing going on there. Some Thank good, you. like acoustic treatment. I, that is my goal for people to not realize that I'm actually in a garage. Oh, you got the oh. garage. Oh, is this your home studio? Yeah, it's the home studio. Get out. It's actually been my, it's Ooh, been my you got a little records up there. A few of them. You know what? I actually didn't hang up. I don't, I wasn't huge on hanging him up, but I lent No, him. you have to. He's you like, gotta, I have gotta way plat, more. <laughs> you got a platinum record, bro. You got to hang it up. I guess yeah, that's a lot of people say, but you know, I, the is, first, my, my roommates actually, I lent them this room when I went back to Boston for six weeks because they live here and they have small studios in their room. I was like, nobody's in there. Use it. And then when I came back to thank me, they had hung up those two in the ASCAP award. And I was like, this is sick. And then like at my first Zoom, I was like sitting on the couch back there and it was like, hi, I'm Jackson. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but, now you just need like some fancy sunglasses and some gold chains and stuff, you know. To yeah, completely... I don't know if this like $15 like Etsy You mean $1,500? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah. so do we only have one half of loot today? Can we confirm? Oh, no, no. Emma's definitely, she's coming on. She's probably- Oh, amazing. Ready. I, for some no. reason, assumed you were together. I don't understand. No, I paid, I, mean, everybody. I paid the extra Zoom subscription so I could do multi-people meetings. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Emma, Emma will probably be on in the next minute. Oh, my God. Wait, oh, Emma, you're going on. He's a little small. I don't know if you remember me, but we went to high school yeah. together. Um, do I remember <laughs> you? I was like, oh, should I see her? Oh, that's cool. so good you. I know. What is good? Not much. How are you? I mean, I'm good. I, I was like debating on whether I should hit you up and tell you that I was about to ask some questions. <laughs> but then I was like, no, nah, I'm going to surprise her. No, it's all good. Um, I, yeah, of course I remember you. We were in the same class. Like, I know. did we have more than one class though? 
I was telling Jordan that you and I were in the songwriting class for Mr. Apostle. Shout out, Mr. Apostle. But you have always been this beautiful, freaking, mega, mega talented chick since, and I can vouch for you since we were like 15 um, <laughs> on guitar. I remember you played guitar and piano. Yeah, and I remember at the same time. At the same time, time. simultaneously. (laughs) But no, I'll never forget this one performance you did for New Music Ensemble um, on the big stage on piano. Do you remember which I'm talking about? I only did one on piano. Yeah, that's my mom's, one of my mom's favorite songs. And she's always really mad at me that I've never done like a better recording of it than the one that I have. I can sing Um, you the hook right now, but I'm not going to because, but I just want to let you know my favorite song too of yours from high school. (laughs) Yeah, Sorry, I didn't really school. introduce myself to you. Hi. I know. But, uh, yeah. Let's talk I'm, about Lude. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm Jordan. And um, obviously, you know Demi. And we've got Jackson and Emma from Lute on the call. Hello. Duh. Yes. And Emma, I love your hat because if you pulled it down, Thank it would you. look like you had hearts for eyes. That was yeah. the goal. Yeah. <laughs> I made yeah. this hat. Yes. Oh, you made that hat? I mean, I didn't make it by hand, but I designed it. Our merch. Whoa. Your merch. Oh, is there a loot logo? Our merch. Well, I heard that there was like a hat of the day thing. And so then I was like, yes. oh, I'm not fine for my hat. <gasps> oh my God. Which you is just, why I was You just made Demi's day by, by citing hat of the day. That's why I was not on here at 4.30 because I was like, oh, I'm ready to go. And then I was like, wait, no, I'm not. And I went in and like found Emma. my hat. Okay, yeah. where can we get loot merch? Loot? We can get it uh, at lootmusic.com. At Walgreens. Or- and, and well, yeah, mm-hmm. at Dwayne Reed only. Mm-hmm. Only people in New York City can buy our hats at Dwayne yeah, exclusive Reed. No, Dwayne no one can Reed. do that. Don't go there. Yeah. That. It's like loot, loot X Dwayne Reed. You know? Oh my God. Loot, loot by, oh my God. Loot by Dwayne Both, my parents. Yeah. Both of my parents can tell you. That would be my dream come true. My mm-hmm. mom used to make fun of me when I was little and tell me that, or tell people that like, if I could, I'd live in Dwayne Reed. Because mm-hmm. I used to go there all the time for like the most random dumb shit that like no one ever needs. But it was like one of those things that like, where can you go with $20 as a kid in New York City? Like no place has anything I can afford, not even Sephora, so. And there was always that kid for me, there's always, well, I'm maybe just me, but I, there's always that kid who liked to shoplift from Dwayne Reed. Like, <laughs> yeah, for no reason. Like yeah. why, why did, why? I was in there one time and this girl I was, I was with, she like came out and she had stolen a banana. And I was like, I, it's like, I was like, why'd you steal? But she's like, I don't know. I don't know. It's that's like where kids go to like feel so low value in thing. a controlled yeah. environment. Yeah, yeah, it's it's only a thirty cent banana, so who cares? Like the the Dwayne Reed next to the Starbucks by Laguardia. <laughs> Jesus you know? Christ, that yeah, I I know a few a few people that used to shop shop yeah. quote unquote there. But so you guys met in college, Gross. right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you told this story a bunch of times, but what I want to know is, did you ever in a million gazillion years imagine that you guys would have millions and gazillions of streams <laughs> and tour the world together? Did you? Uh, definitely not. We still got to tour the world. That's next on we the list. But we definitely the toured world. the U.S., so that's good. I would say I knew that we had a bright future. I knew we were going to succeed in anything we set out to do because that's the type of person that I, I am, I've always been. Um, yeah, but I did not know what it would amount to and what it would look like at all. I don't, I would say I doubt Emma did, but maybe, I don't know. I always knew, yeah. I knew from the very start. Do you remember the um, first song you guys wrote together? Was it oh, in a yeah. college dorm? Yeah. It was in a college, not quite dorm. Actually, we finished it in your room. So yeah. Study yeah. lounge, a college study lounge. I was about to say, I can search my email for a golden boy and see if it comes up, but, uh, or maybe was that it's your first song? Loop. Yeah, that first song. was a song that Golden I... Boy, yeah. Can we I properly debut the, the song on this show? If I can <laughs> find it. If it's, I doubt it's in my email. Uh, but <laughs> hold up, let me search. No pressure. It's probably okay. like in your files, somewhere deep on a hard drive. I'm going to look at like the oldest... Oh my God, Golden Boy new mix. You're in for a freaking <laughs> treat, guys. <laughs> Which means um, that there's a mix that's older than that one. That, okay, this is from 2013. Oh my oh God, my only God. on it's oh, okay. Jordan Demi. Will you hear this? Yeah, Let's we've get never... Ready. It's also really... Okay, so you know how people <laughs> give dis- disclaimers before they play songs? 
yeah. that aren't done. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to give some disclaimers <laughs> before I play this song. We haven't sent it to mastering yet. No. Uh, <laughs> it, it's the first song we ever wrote. Emma's voice is literally higher. Um, we it's were literally like the only. This is like to give some like some reference of the time frame. I have to do this. You can say don't do disclaimers. I'm just gonna do disclaimers. I have to. I don't care. Like, any this songwriter, one, producer, one, they have to save this. By all means, to, do to, it. To give a snapshot of the time frame, <laughs> Taylor Swift had just dropped Trouble, and like wow. it shook the world, especially the pop junkies at Purchase, which there was only like six and a half of us. So. But it shook everybody. They were like, the new Taylor Swift came out. Like, I remember a kid came out from the studio and he's like, it has a dub set. It may or may not have a dub set drop in it. And I was like, what? Anyway. Wow. So uh, Emma was 17. I was 20 when we wrote this. Just, yeah, yeah, exactly. Seven years ago. Uh, it's Whoa. cringy. It's cringy. But it was, it had, a, it sounded like trouble, except a lot worse. All right, here we go. Jackson, here. Jackson, it might be like seven years to the day. Also, I don't even know if. Like, we met in class the first time that yeah. we worked together. You didn't even say the most important part, which but is that I, we didn't know each other and met in songwriting class in our second class and were randomly paired together for a project wow. because our teacher, who didn't know anyone's names yet, paired uh -oh. us based on who we were sitting next to. And wow. Jackson and I, we weren't sitting next to anybody. I was sitting right in front of him. Because we're both fucking cool and loners and whatnot and whatever. But, or people hate us. I, can't, I don't know. But he no, just no, paired no. us together because it was easier than, like, dealing with whatever. And so, funny enough, like, I had this thing, this idea that I'd been, like, trying to come up with all summer from, like, before I graduated LaGuardia to, like, the summer before college. And I was yeah. like, all right, well, I can't do anything with this. Essentially, I high schooler comes in with this chorus, and I'm just like, at the time, yeah. it's like the the best thing I've ever heard. Also, I'm gonna actually when I play it, I'm gonna switch to um switch my output to my Apollo here, which somebody recently taught me how to do in a Zoom session, which also should momentarily make this really awkward. I guess you guys have mics. And we're editing. We can edit. We edit this. It's not live. So, <laughs> is it coming? Am I coming through here? Yeah. Great. Okay. I can I mean, it sounds it's like kinda, it, but I can't tell. It's kind of tinny, but yeah. Oh man, I'll fix my low end. Um, but when I play it, it will also not like come through <laughs> the speakers and then back. It'll actually just be through Zoom, which will be nice. All right. Whoa, that's cool. Let's hear it. Anyway, this is Golden Boy, 2013, first song Loot ever wrote. Oh. <laughs> Expected a good impression the first time. You probably had too much to drink and couldn't think of a good line. Oh god. And my friends keep telling me they can tell you're a good guy. Got some got some got some Tay Tay vibes going. Oh yeah. Ready? We're so damn close, the heat should burn. So why am I still freezing? Seems like the truth is far from you. Words can't be so misleading. They say your heart is made of gold, and maybe that's why you're so. It slaps, it slaps, not gonna lie. Damn, Classic. writing All hits right. since day one. That was an exclusive, day exclusive, day one. Us exclusive loot revisiting their very first song for 2013. Day what a one. rush. What yeah. a rush, guys. Oh, uh, thank you for previewing that. Are so we going to release? Guys, no, I'm looking. Or not, guys, that song got you need to get You need to get like a uh, Cascade or somebody to remix it. <laughs> uh, loot and Marshmallow. Loot, loot and Marshmallow, yeah. Um, attention. What? Viral. Can you guys hear me now? I think yeah. I switched my name. You're good. You're good. Yeah, yeah. That was good technical maneuvering there, Jackson. Yeah, you? good job, Jackson. Yeah. Damn. I went to the thing that said uh, mute, and then I clicked to the side of it, and then I selected a different option, and then I changed it back. That was the crazy part. It was some crazy stuff. It's I actually still impressive. Know. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? It was, it was enough to interest our teacher, uh, who was our... Uh, 
who was a, and still is, like a big songwriter, producer, artist, developer, owned an independent label, had a joint, be, a joint venture with um, UMPG. And just like, he was like a, a hugely established guy that we were like desperately trying to impress, or at least I was. Emma was just like, I'm just to make friends. And, I was fine. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but, yeah, no, that, that is really what was happening. I didn't know anyone. Yeah, and it started this whole sequence of like, since he reacted to it so strongly, he was like, hey, like keep, keep writing together and I'm, I'm showed this to my partner. Um, this is Carl Sturgeon and Evan Rogers, Carl Sturgeon and Presser. If you look them up, you'll see that they are the two guys who developed, who literally like discovered, developed and signed Rihanna and wow. like other people. So like when he was like, I like this, we were like, you like it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it we were so excited. Of, like we started yeah. writing after that like doing a lot and they they that turned into ultimately like how we got into the business through a, a small kind of publishing deal through them we're still signed to them um and they like taught us like everything at the beginning like everything we knew in terms of what is what and like anyway so that's that's a whole nother chapter but it was that that golden boy was the beginning really of all that i appreciate the window into uh into your origins there so looking back at it, how do you feel about the way your music has evolved over the past six, seven years? Great. I, really, I mean, it's, oh, thank God it's better than that. Uh, we can only go up from there, honestly. <laughs> yeah. But, but seriously, when you guys, once you guys decided to be a duo, what did you have in mind in terms of the sound you wanted to make at the time? What did you, did you talk about? Is it going to be electronic? Is it going to be more live instrumentation? Like, how did you go about forming the sound? I, I think um, that we had a unique thing in terms of, like, in the fact that we were song we were songwriting and we were writing for pitch or trying to write for pitch songs for other artists for like basically two over two years before we like had any rolled out any artists any loot stuff like as artists. So because of that, we like, we, we were writing tons and tons and tons of pop songs and we almost like filtered through and tried all these different sounds like unintentionally just because we were trying to mimic like the popular songs on the radio. Like one day we'd write one that sounded like, like a Disney song. And the next day it would sound like, you know, like Hey Mama by, by uh, David Guetta and BB Rexa. Uh, so like it, we, we went through all these different sounds just being songwriters and then it allowed us to filter through like what we liked and what we didn't. And we really organically landed on like kind of a sound that we felt like, Oh, we wrote this kind of in the mind with it, with it being for pitch in mind. But when the product was done, we were like, Oh, this, this, this really feels like unique to us and suits us. And that was how without your love. Um, so that was the first one that we wrote where we were like this, like this feels like, a lute song, not a song that we would pitch. And we actually didn't even really pitch that. I don't think we pitched it at all. So yeah, we, we, we didn't even really plan, like discuss or plan it, I guess, long answer short. We just kind of like experimented until we found a sound that just, we both naturally were just like, kind of like in sync on, I guess. Yeah. Jackson, I think that it's interesting though, that like the first song that like we, did that had barely any production on it whatsoever was the reason that we were able to sort of mold it into what we wanted. Like, there's something to be said for that. Like, obviously when you go into a session with a producer, I'm um, actually, this might not be obvious to a lot of people, but like when you go into a writing session and you're writing for maybe pitch or you don't really know what you're doing, you just want to write a song. It's a lot easier to not have to do it usually with like an entire track already done ready to go like as exciting as that is for a lot of people to hear it's sometimes easier when you have more areas to explore sonically and like when we wrote hi without your love it was just like one sound it was like one instrument and then like a snap and then i just sang over it and we had our first meeting with um island records and we just like played it because we thought it was so cool and different than the other stuff that we'd been doing and everything else was so overdone and produced and heavy and like this was just kind of you, kind of the same way that you were talking about how like it was me playing piano on a stage like and that's like mm -hmm. the thing that you remember it's the same thing we're like sometimes mm -hmm. stepping back from all the like extra stuff 
and just hearing that core sound is like, oh, I see something. Like, there's a lane here. Like, let's build it around this. And we yeah. kind of did go for that after. Like, the uh, yeah. trajectory, even with produced out songs, like, I think that your production developed in a very interesting, different way for us than it has for, like, when you produce stuff for other people. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Emma, it you were always... Like you always stood out to me, especially not just in school, but not in just this particular class, but overall, I was like, this girl is a freaking star. It just, there's a presence, you know what I mean? What, I, what? I don't feel that way at all I, about myself. So well, it's really it's interesting true. to hear you someone else say about me in high school. Like, Absolutely. Like, How did going to art school for, for high school and college contribute to your development as an artist? Um, aside from meeting Jackson. Aside from meeting Jackson, yes. I think going to a, an art school for like essentially middle high school and college, I think it made it a lot easier for me to pass classes because I was basically learning the same things over and over again. Um, and it gave me a deep, like a deeper understanding of what I was doing and why. Um, and it made it easier for me to like figure out what my lane is. Unfortunately, part of my insecurities in high school were like that no matter what I tried to do, everything that I wrote ended up sounding like a pop song. And I really like, didn't like that about my songs at all. It was and organic. then I it was got to call. Yeah. I mean, like I'm surrounded, I was surrounded by like people like, like, I mean, jazz like, and rest, and, yeah. And like all these like grand sense of jazz writing in six times. Like, like Jackson, you have no idea. Like I, she was like, always a pop like, star. She was always just natural born pop star. But like Natural. in a way that was not something that made me feel like star quality. I felt like I don't belong here. All the things I do are simple. And like, I thought making a section of a song six, eight was really cool. And then I would <laughs> listen to like what Julian was doing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to go fuck myself now. All right, <laughs> bye. Walk off. Hello. I think that it's, it's a testament to that class to like the people, the teachers at like, LaGuardia that supported people doing interesting mainstream things as well as interesting kind of like different stuff. Um, same thing with Purchase because there were teachers that I just gravitated towards because I felt like they understood me mm -hmm. and like I didn't feel judged by them. Weirdly enough, like as much as I felt like insecure around kids at my school, I always felt like Apostle understands what like what I'm going for or like same thing with like Hamilton. Like they were my two um, they were the two guys that I got for my audition at LaGuardia. Like, can you imagine a better duo of like cool dudes who like want to hear kids coming up with new music? I ended up, I don't even know if I'm supposed to talk, like say this, but uh, who cares? It doesn't matter now. But like my LaGuardia audition, you know, you're supposed to sing a song, whatever song, a cappella, unless mm -hmm. there's like in fine print, unless you can accompany yourself. Mm -hmm. So like I brought my guitar to my LaGuardia audition and I remember there being like a whole thing with the head of the department who was like trying to say um, that like I couldn't and I was like, but it says I can. And so then I walk into the audition room and they're like, hey, and you have to like write this little essay right beforehand. Uh -huh. And I didn't think they were going to read it. And they did, which, you know, that makes sense now as an adult. But as a kid, I was like, oh. I didn't realize like how fast this happens mm -hmm. and they're like so we hear you write songs and they like <laughs> made some apostle. like yeah they both like sit back in their desks in mr apostle's room and they like made some weird pack to like scare me or something at first and they were like no let's go so you hear what you got like the sing or whatever and so i start singing like 30 seconds of one song and they're like okay next one and i start singing like 30 seconds of another song and i played like 30 seconds of four songs and that was like my audition <laughs> Wow. And then just you remember, for like you remember what song were they original songs or cover songs? Yeah, they were they were songs I'd written as like a twelve year old, thirteen year old kid, like shaky. And then you, you come in and they're like, "So you think you're a songwriter?" Like yeah, <laughs> it was like yeah, it was literally like star who's absurdly talented. Like oh my gosh, and I'm like, hey, what? And I just remember one of them going, "Well, yeah, we read your essay," and I was like, oh. And like, then I wasn't nervous anymore. And they were like, all right, like just play some stuff for us. And I was just like, so nerve wracking. But then at the same time, I was like, 
these guys are like the dopest people ever. And like, it made me really respect and admire like going to a school for what I like to do versus like having to go to some school that like, like I would never get into Stuyvesant. I just wouldn't because A, I'm terrible at math and B, I don't want to go there. Like I have no passion Mm -hmm. to do that Mm -hmm. stuff. And like, this was like the only place that I felt like I could fit in and like have a fresh start and like be the person I wanted to be. And then immediately I was like scared shitless of everything for four years as you are when you're in high school. And like, like I even thought like Demi was like much too cool for me to hang out with. So I essentially what? just like barely talked to cool. you I for like, every day. I'm like, I'm I'm so you were too cool for me. <laughs> yeah. There's the that. amount of insecurities that you go through as a teenage girl Absolutely. are whacked out. That but in a nutshell though, it's that's what? like everybody that's high school in a nutshell. Everybody yeah. thinks somebody's better or worse or cooler or less cool and has some skewed, skewed like uh, themselves. It's impossible. Yeah. Like, like you, you, you turn fourteen and you're like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Yeah, and that's basically what I'm doing now, too. Like, I'm still, I wake up and I'm just like, what the fuck is good? Like, I feel my face sometimes, and I'm like... You know, I I, I genuinely feel left out because I went to a public high school in Missouri and played trumpet in the marching band, and I just feel, like, left out. You know, I feel, you know... I I went to public high school in Massachusetts and played played bass drum in the marching band, so... I also played jazz piano. Uh, yeah, but I wasn't good enough to be in ja- in jazz band. Not even the whole <laughs> But I did get into a couple of jazz conservatories for college, so I I, I can't. Did you did you, uh-huh. did you did you do marching band at all, Jackson? Yeah, it was required if you were in. So I I was not. I'm not. I I don't really have an academic academic mind. I, academics were always really difficult for me. Um, so I would take a lot as many like honors music classes as I could to boost my GPA, uh, which was like concert concert choir and jazz band but there are already two really good piano players in jazz band so i played marimba in jazz band but just like learned to play marimba um <laughs> i did not know that i never knew that jackson but as it that's actually funny i realized I never, yeah i never did that you but remember I, the p- I a marimba player i was just a piano player who could like read music okay <laughs> and, that's the only requirement is you know how to read music <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's a requirement if you were in jazz band you had to do marching band yeah. So that's not, no, I, in like, in a lot of places, marching band is like really cool and sick and the football team's <laughs> off. This was not one of those places. Yeah, I, I quit after my freshman year because the marching band was just too dorky. I just couldn't handle the dorkiness. It was just overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. I feel Our like. marching band was the shit. They used to come around. Everyone wanted to be in like, we didn't have a marching band, but everyone wanted to be in band because you got to like miss classes on holidays when they would randomly like have the band walk around <laughs> all day long around our school. And it was like, you got credit for doing it for whatever class. It, it was like whatever band credit kind. you got. Yeah. Yeah. Like our school was fucking nuts. Oh my God. I'm just remembering so Shout much out. stuff that like Shout would out. never fly anywhere else. And I, I don't think they do it now either. Like, I think we had like, that was like the end of that. They're like end much more academic crime. now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Emma, you, you don't you you have an interest you have like a musical theater thing going on, right? Oh yeah, big time. Big yeah. time lover of the musical theater. Yeah, I was a theater kid in high school. I did community theater. I did I did little <laughs> Rogers and Hammerstein, you know. Um, yeah, I wasn't good enough to get into any of the shows at LaGuardia. Well, I mean, outside of that, LaGuardia. Because my name's not Timmy Chalamet. I couldn't get into any of the shows at LaGuardia. Oh, look at you now. <laughs> look at me now. I'm look at her now. Timmy Chalamet. <laughs> But um, my question yeah. is, if you could be in, if you could, what's your dream, like, musical theater Broadway role? Like, Ooh. I was thinking about this unrelated to this at, at all. I was just in the shower and put on Les Mis because I was like, hmm, it's on Netflix now. Um, and I feel like being in that show would be so fucking cool. And then I was listening further. And by listening, I mean, I was watching it, but I was in the shower. So I like, kept going like this, but I was like singing along as I do always with like all the characters. I always forget that everyone dies. How do I always forget that everyone dies? So like, I want to be in, in Les Mis right up until like, um, what's her face gets killed because she's saving the other guy's life. Why can't I ever remember any of their names? It's really weird. Um, but I want to sing like on my own. Like that's all I want to do is just sing that song, you know? 
do you ever <laughs> like do you ever disagree on anything musically like is there ever like a blow up fight like put that mix uh, like oh <laughs> always what's um, the dynamic in the songwriting process as well we're, i would say we're closer to siblings who, who fight much than, closer yeah than, than best we're like <laughs> we're so close like it, like actually to the point where we don't like we don't we're not even polite to each other. I think it's like we're not we're not scared to argue with each other. We work in there seven years. She'll be like, Do you like yeah. that? Like, no, it's shitty. Like <laughs> not that. <laughs> but no, I mean no, it's usually nicer than that, but that's yeah, essentially yeah. what it is. Yeah. But but um we understand each other so well and each other's workflow so well. Um and we're also both like similar. We're both really like high energy, high strong, pretty intense people. Um yeah. actually, yeah, like we 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 like had to really, I mean, actually it was pretty effortless, but it took a little while for us to really, we were always working together, but it took probably till two or three years until we had a really, really like really, um, I'm looking, what's the word? Symbiotic this? Work this? that we were doing. That was like, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I agree. And, and then once we did, I mean, and we were, always, we were always writing, but it just became, we became better at collaborating with each other over time. Um, and going on two tours and spending like six months doing intense radio promo, doing, you know, four different cities a week for six months and flying all over the place definitely makes you really close to somebody. We have like the craziest memories, like craziest, like, and, and more to come, hopefully. Um, Remember when we um, had to share a room when we came here for the first time? Yeah. But the yeah. weirdest weekend of our lives. But yeah. What we happened? Can you tell us? It was just our first, like, Grammy weekend, basically, because we had just been signed to Island, like, that week. We got it all signed, basically, so that they could have an excuse to fly us out and meet all the people that we would normally never get to meet, because we were based in New York. Um, but everyone's based in Los Angeles, because that's what happens when you're in this industry. Mm. People just move. That's I know. Thing, that's the thing of our show, is Jimmy mm. just right likes to, to boo people who move to LA. Jimmy <laughs> likes to boo LA. Yeah. I, I While wish wearing a hat. <laughs> prefer New York. New York's way better in every way. Wait, guys, time I will out. say, I, I don't miss winters time in New out. York Jackson or summers time in New York. Wait, what happened? What happened? So, okay, so I did first oh, call. Here we go. I did, I oh, did, is that what you've been I was going to ask. I was doing my nails before this. Yeah, so, okay, so so what should I do for the second color? Should I do this really pale pink, which actually looks really nice when it's done? For all the fans, Jackson is, in fact, painting his nails during this interview. Yeah, oh, like, and, they, and he's done a great a job. You can't even see them. He finds, he finds interviews so boring that he has to do something to distract himself to entertain. <laughs> I promise everyone, I'm so fidgety. I just want to have some <laughs> for you guys. Second color, this one or this one? I think light pink. Pink, or pink. I go, I go pink the for pink. the contrast. I'm trying pink. to, I'm, I'm a photographer and I'm trying to gain confidence as a stylist more. So I'm going to okay. make the decision and say, you know, pink. pink. I, I like that you're like taking charge in this moment and following your heart with pink. Yeah. So you guys had this project, right? And I'm just trying to figure out which, how did it go? You started this project, <laughs> Loot, okay? Oh, okay, which Loot. Which I want to ask how this came about. But going from, I mean, because I've seen some videos of you guys, I need to catch you live, but going from in the recording studio to on stage you guys look great on stage like i'm watching emma's working it on the microphone jackson's on the other side like mouthing the words it looks great <laughs> um do either of you have stage fright what was that transition from recording artists to, to performing artists like much stage fright so yes yes um yes just i like that you just answered the question with one word <laughs> <laughs> up performing it has a little less but what I said, well, Emma grew up performing. She had probably a little bit left. Um, but Emma, you start. You, 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 you answer it unless you want me to. Um, okay, I'll let Jackson speak for himself. I, I think you're right. I definitely had less stage fright than you, but that was more because I was just waiting to be able to like, get on stage and play songs that we'd been writing again. Like, I grew up, obviously, I was a theater kid, and like I was in shows when I was little, and I did the, like, obsessed with Broadway thing my entire life. My grandmother and I like still every year, except for this year, unfortunately, we go see a Broadway show together because like our birthdays. Did you ever play Little Red Riding Hood and in Into the Woods? No, but I, I love that character. How and did you miss that one? That's that, what I thought, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, it was never an option. They almost did into the into the woods. They almost did for our senior year at LaGuardia, and then they changed it last second to like. I remember that sweet charity, and I was like, "That is the same show that you did last year, but not." Don't you remember that? Like my. I do remember that. Yeah. We got so hyped because of that, the into the woods thing. There yeah. was gonna be into the woods, or anyway, like. I just opened up a there wound. There's so yeah. many shows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you opened up. You opened up a wound, man. No, oh, um, geez, but. Yeah. What were you going to say? No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, there were so many shows that, that, that like, I still, I, I just love Broadway. And I, I also, like, I think I still get this way. Um, it's almost difficult for me to watch live performances of other people, even though I love going to shows. You there's feel jealous that you're not up there yourself? There's, there's a part of me. And ever since I was a little kid, I didn't know what it was. But as an adult, I figured it out. Like, that's what it is. It's I don't really care what I am doing on that stage. I want to be the person up there. I want to be a part of whatever's going on. Like, I don't want to fucking me, be in the crowd. I want to be up there. Let me ask you a question. Um, when I was doing theater... The big thing that we found the most like meaningful, the goal you'd want to do is originate a part on Broadway to in, to be the first one in a role, right? Yeah. And I remember I am. Um, this is my only name drop. I did promo <laughs> photos for Laura Dreyfus uh, last year, Whoa. and I remember just being in awe of her, not because she was famous for whatever, but because she originated a part in a large scale successful Broadway musical. And to me, that's just as impressive as like winning an Oscar or something. Yeah. Like, there's something special about that. Of course. Yes, for sure. Yeah. There's definitely something to be said for the fact that like you remember people's names, especially in successful shows. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's a reason that even people who don't like musical theater know certain people's names. Like, that's, why, that's why I was curious about what your dream, like, lead role would be in a Broadway uh, show because okay in that yeah. sense like I think like either lead from Wicked like would be like the thing to be known uh, for at least big, when I was growing up like were you a big, I was like, were you a big Christian show. Chenoweth fan yeah and I mean to the point that like I you know it 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 made me discover other things that she did and I remember um like watching on PBS with my grandma, like Candide for the first time. And yes. I was like, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Her voice is insane. I can't believe that she did this and that. Like it opened up that whole world of like, whoa, these people do other things as well. And like that was pre YouTube. And yeah. then in high school in like Miss Baskerville's vocal teachings, I did one of those, I did the song that I'd been in love with, like, forever and I was like this is the hardest song I've ever sung for sure like it is absurdly difficult high I don't know what I'm doing and like it was just a testament to like wow you did something that you've wanted to do since you were a little kid like that's the closest I've ever come to that besides like performing on stage you right. know like with Jackson and like being a dope awesome rock star thing um I go into a completely different headspace when I'm on stage like I'm not me because if I am I completely freak out and do have stage fright though you like, kind of have like a character you play almost when you're on stage yeah like a different persona. like I have to be like just the most confident cool bomb ass version of myself like yeah it's like coming up with your own like superhero like alter ego thing like just so that I like get through it because otherwise I'll totally have like a full-on meltdown like and it's happened after shows, like right after shows. Sometimes like I get insane heart palpitations, like Whoa. just from all the adrenaline of like, oh my God, I can't believe I just did that. Like, it's like, I imagine it's what people feel when they go skydiving, honestly. <laughs> like that's wow. the only thing I can think of to compare it to that. And sometimes it's so intense that like it hinders my ability to like do things after. Sorry, Jackson, that's happened to you so many times that you've had to pick up all the slack after a show. <laughs> I don't think yeah. it's, I don't think it's as bad as you think, but maybe I'm just well, maybe it sucks I'm for me. <laughs> pressing all the memories of when I was loading out all the gear, it was like, God damn it, Emma. Yeah, no, really, it's like <laughs> okay sometimes. Like sometimes I literally I'm sitting like in a van that's like not even on, and I'm like sweating profusely, like don't know what's happening to me. It's like a panic attack, but it's also just like a ton of adrenaline, like being like released again. It's very weird. Um, it's, I don't it's think so, I it's almost that strange that like if you were ever to get over that, you'd almost ask yourself, "Am I bored or something?" Yeah, you know? yeah. but like that's the thing is like you just put on a fucking 
face yeah. or a mask or whatever and like you go on stage sometimes for me it's like oh I'm gonna wear this hat and like then I put on a hat and I feel like 10 times more confident or like the biggest thing is like Jackson and I like sometimes it's like sunglasses or like he'll like open his shirt and all of a sudden he's like I'm a rock star pop and, like, star to sound pop star. star yeah it's yeah. like you paint your nails. It's it's little. It's it's <laughs> yeah. I, I think seriously, it's silly, but I, that, that's one thing that me and Emma are the same on. And I think a lot of people perform live. Uh, it's like you need to. It's like how oh, you throw on your favorite song when you're doing something. So you when you're walking from you know from the, to the coffee shop in the morning because you have your own personal soundtrack and you feel like a rock star. It's the same thing except with like visual things. Like I I dress that way on stage. Only, only like a little bit because it looks cool to the audience, but more so I feel fucking cool yeah. when I go out there. <laughs> Let's please your managers and your label and talk about more recent music. Um, yes. uh, your, your last, you released an, an EP, uh, I guess a few months ago, uh, Hard Eyes. First of all, I was telling Demi before you guys came on, I love This Is How You Feel. And I'm like an indie rock cool guy, you know, and like, but that that song has such a good energy to it. And it just makes me feel like I'm in high school again and I'm ready to like go out on a Friday night or something. So, yeah. That's like the best compliment for that song. That is like so totally what that is. Like that's representative of like that yeah. 17 again feeling. Yeah, like it's it would be a good soundtrack song for like a, like a teen comedy kind of thing. Hey, you're yeah. preaching to the choir. I yeah. I full on am supportive of that. We wanted that uh. to sound like or to make you feel like the feeling of like the butterflies in your stomach when you're like falling in love or when you've like just met somebody and you're like, what the fuck is going on? This is insane. Like that's why that's why like it's frantic and it's like holy shit. Like that's why the production and the mood of it is so like quick and kind of like like almost spastic in a way like it's, it's yeah it's that's caffeinated like caffeinated was the word that i yeah. oh caffeinated. Yeah. i like that that's a yeah. great way to describe jackson in a nutshell too yep. yeah I, hey that's basically <laughs> yeah. jackson what's on your desk right now what do you what how many caffeinated beverages do we think how many actually, nail polishes actually well, <laughs> if you don't drink the nail polish actually, one almost <laughs> empty cold brew from this morning all right but don't get me don't don't be mistaken i am always caffeinated Actually, you know man's, what? Man's got caffeine. I just have a lot of energy. I'm a very passionate, energetic person, and I used yes. to really try to. I really used to try to muffle it when I was a kid because I think it's, it can be annoying for a lot of people. And then I just decided, fuck that. I'm just gonna be myself, and people can be annoyed by it or they can embrace it. And you were the kid. You were the kid that when your mom was trying to have a conversation, you were running around and being annoying and like getting into things. <laughs> you can just sit still. The most annoying child, but like without a doubt, like I was probably, I would have hated babysitting the kid version of me. Like would have been terrible. I feel um, like we were completely opposite children. Yeah. That's but like, that's, you're the kind of kid I wanted to hang out with all the time. Like always. I only wanted to hang out with like the cool, like rambunctious kids who I probably shouldn't have been hanging out with. Cause like they were going to make me get into trouble. Yeah. Like that's the kind of person I wanted to hang out with. You know those those kids when you're when you're little that always kind of make you nervous because you're afraid they're yeah. gonna get into something. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's good. Wow. Those are really like good so neat nails. They came out pretty. I'm not gonna lie. This may be Whoa. my. Also, I think that pink is like your color, like that specific color, whatever that is, is like that looks very good on you. Yeah. I enjoy it a lot. Thank you. You know what? When Jackson has painted his nails during like, the show. Yeah. <laughs> this is a first. Well, remember how we were talking about him? He's like got a lot of energy. So yeah. there, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I need to be multitasking all the time or I'll go crazy. So in yeah. a normal in a normal world, you guys would kind of be coming off a festival season right now or some kind of summer oh, tour. So, so since you have this time at home, in, have you guys been working on new music at all or what's what's going yes. on there? Yes, we have. We have um, five, four, five, six maybe new songs. Uh, that are all like pretty close to the finish line uh, and then we're kind of picking like which ones we want to like roll out which ones we want to build towards album uh, and they're a little yes, more make a full album I'm a full album advocate and you we guys are. need a full album we are that is the next step yeah. finally yeah, um, and it's much more songwriter like based like there's going to be a lot of like big productions but a lot of them are going to be much more stripped productions just like more sing like a little more singer songwriter uh, kind of based 
um, just cause that's kind of, that's like, we always just like, I think the songs that come out are always just like kind of a reflection of how we're feeling and where we're at in life and like whatever we, we feel like making and whatever we're inspired by. So that's kind of the next wave of music. That's just what it is right now. Get ready uh, for a lot of really sad songs, unlike all the other songs that we've ever written, which aren't sad at all sometimes. We're moving really freely like right now, which is really nice. We're so self-contained. Like a lot of the records, I mean, this is how you feel just me and Emma wrote. Uh, so, and I think I mixed most of the songs in the last EP too. So yeah. like, we don't need like everything we're doing here in my studio's garage. In my studio, that's actually, that's definitely not a garage. <laughs> Um, but uh you got the, platinum the record, tracks, man. You, can still see the link. you got the record on the wall you're good you're good a plat yes platinum record on the wall in a garage that's yeah the <laughs> but yeah so that's kind of our, our plan like we uh we are we are piecing together like a, the next body of work and uh and and just hopefully hopefully uh touring happens again soon because we really want to get out on the road and do a headline tour, which is what we're about to do. Um, that's kind of the next two things we want to hit. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to it. And before we let you go, Demi, do you have a game? Do you have a game for? I have a game for you guys. And I always have a funny game. Um, really quick. I'm actually just really curious before we play this game. Who named you guys Loot? Where'd that come from? Oh. Um, my dad. <laughs> really? Your dad? <laughs> my dad yeah. named us Loot. It's my, so my like stage name, which is also just my middle name because it was a fuck up on my birth certificate, messed up on my birth certificate, whatever. Um, it's Emma Love Block. Like that's my name. Mm -hmm. So I go by Emma Love. Never forget it. Uh, or I did at Never the time. Forget. People just know me by my whole name again. So who cares? Emma Love Block. Um, I remember and that. And Jackson, <laughs> yeah. And Jackson is Jackson Foot. So like, F-O-O-T. We wanted, yeah, it's F-O-O-T-E. And mine is L-O-V. Um, so my dad kind of was like, well, what if you just like mashed them together? Now you have to yeah. give your dad 10% of all your royalties. And I know. Like luckily Spears. he did it. Luckily he, he gave us the family discount. <laughs> we love um, you, Britney Spears. No yeah. Fun. But okay. The theme is Emma's dancing. Going to this is the theme song. I was hoping you guys would sing along, but it's all good. Okay. I didn't know where we were going with it. <laughs> okay. It's actually if just it's actually just the Mario Kart uh, when you're invisible. Give me away. Oh my god, that's exactly what it sounded like too. Yeah. Give me away. Okay, guys, if you could have dinner with either of these two dynamic duos, okay, answer as fast as you can without thinking. Which one would it be? Twenty One Pilots or Ben and Jerry? Ben and Jerry. Oh, pilots. <laughs> John Lennon and Paul McCartney or the White Stripes? John Lennon. Ooh, Paul Lennon Paul. McCartney for sure. Damn. Daft Punk or Sonny and Cher? Daft Sonny and Cher. The Carpenters <laughs> or the Black Keys? You guys agree on a lot of things. Black Keys. Black Keys probably. The Chainsmokers or Massive Attack? Chainsmokers. Ooh, Chainsmokers. Okay, this is last but not least, but Crystal Castles or DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I mean, are you kidding me? Jazzy Jeff, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Ding, like, ding, I ding, would want to talk to Will Smith about this. Like, great questions, awesome questions. You won. These are uh, great you questions. Won. You won. These the are game. like so good. You won the game. Thanks, y'all. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. I take pride in the game. Thank you for playing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thanks Emma and Jackson for being on the show. Really appreciate it. Thank you for, thank having you for having us. Oh, twinsies, sorry. <laughs> That's classic. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for having us. This was so much fun. I and did you to... notice we went through the entire show, did not mention whether or not you're dating, and did not mention <laughs> and did not and did not mention uh, Joe Jonas. Did not and, mention oh my God. Of those things. Both of those things. Joe Bros for right. life. We'll see you guys later. Thanks a lot. Thanks so thank much. Thank you for having us. Bye guys. Thank you so reunion. much. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you to our guests, Emma and Jackson from Loot. And thanks for listening to It's Real with Jordan and Demi. You can find me at jordanedwardsstudio.com or on Instagram at jordanedwardsstudio. And you can find me on Instagram at demi underscore ramos. Thanks for listening.